I started playing Minecraft in 1.15. Quite early in my first survival world, I built someone else's zombie pigman farm, and it had completely inadequate loot management. So out of necessity, I decided to research how to move and sort items in the nether, and I want to share what I learned with you. Most of what I'm saying shouldn't be news to anyone, so if you're just interested in that fun high capacity system, there is a timestamp you can skip to in the description. Let's start with hoppers. Normally a hopper can only deal with 9000 items per hour. Two and a half times per second, a hopper sucks items in from above and pushes one item out at the pointy end. It can pick up a whole stack at the same time, but it will only push out one item at a time from that stack, so it would seem that 9000 is all we can get. There is a trick though. A hopper under a hopper will also pull items out from the hopper above, so if we set up things carefully, we can double the performance. Here's one such configuration. This hopper here can pull whole stacks of items in. It will push 9000 items per hour to the hopper here, and the hopper under it will suck 9000 items per hour, and this can deal with 18,000 items per hour, at least if they come in stacks. If you're only dealing with unstackable items, this won't help. Attach a dropper here, or maybe a double chest that you have two hoppers under, and now you can have double performance. As you can see, two items are coming in at a time. This can also be extended if you just place hoppers like this on top of each other, with the upper hopper pointing down into the downwards hopper. If we now throw a stack of items in here, this will also go at double speed. Even though it, the number increases just one at a time, but you can see it, it goes much faster than if you would have just one. This is also a double speed hopper line. So if we're dealing with loot from a mob farm, we can imagine that the mobs are dying somewhere on top of this hopper. They drop their loot. And then now we can shoot it out from this dropper at 18,000 items per hour and then deal with the loot somewhere else below. This is the most basic setup I can think of. Might exist simpler, but this is almost as simple as it gets. This is the system I'm using in my current zombified pigland farm. The hoppers with the carpets above them is where the zombified piglins get killed and the hoppers pick up their loot. Then we have double speed hopper lines pointing into the droppers here. There's three droppers. The comparators read the contents of the droppers and if there's something in them that enables the clock and the clock just pushes out items out of the droppers. The magic happens in the cobweb here. If I remove the cobweb, you can see that the items are flying just all over the place below there. With the cobweb back, the items are being shot out of the droppers, and the cobweb entirely stops their sideways motions. This is important, because that means that once the items slowly go down through the cobweb and fall out, they move absolutely straight down. With visual glitches, by the way, but the visual glitches are just rendering issues, I imagine, because the items themselves are perfectly well behaved. I have tested this with tens if not hundreds of thousands of items, and they always fall straight down. We could, of course, just build a tube here that forces the items to fall straight, but where's the fun in that? This makes it interesting, and... It's not that hard to find cobwebs. The reason why I want something like this is because my zombified piglin farm is high up, near, clo near to build limit. While I wanted to build the item sorting system just on top of the bedrock, because it's more convenient that way. And that is also why this second cobweb exists. It is important if the items fall a very long way. If they're falling just this distance like here, I imagine it wouldn't be necessary, but if the items are falling a long way, 
they move fast enough that they may pass through this string here without being detected. And the string is here so that when the items are falling through it, it gets disturbed. The observer here detects that disturbance. It sends out the pulse, which gets extended by this pulse extender. The pulse extender here enables this clock and lets the clock fire twice. Twice is all we need. And we want to do it twice because in some situations the items can be falling down while the slime block is extended so they would end up on top of the slime block. So if we shoot twice we get a very good chance that we will pick everything up. Once this piston and slime block has shot the items so they fly over the ice, they hit this chest here. Since the chest is not a full-sized block, this means that the items will just straddle the line between this block here and the, well, in this case, the air below it. But more importantly, after they get pushed, they get pushed absolutely straight, which means that they will be partially on the ice, which allows them to glide, but also partially over the hoppers, which allows them to be picked up by the hoppers. When the items are flying here, they disturb this string, which is detected by this observer. It goes into a two-tick repeater, which fires this piston with the slime block and pushes the items quite far. Now, you could take this exact setup and just duplicate it here and then make the whole ice turn and then you can duplicate it again and again and again and again and again as many times as you wish. Of course, when the items are flying much further than this distance, where they're ending up all the way over here, the timing of two ticks on the repeater might not be enough. But I imagine that if you have a loot collection problem that big, you already know what you're doing and, and this is not a video for you. At least not this part. Now, if the mobs we are killing are relatively evenly spread out between the three hoppers, that means that this can handle up to 54,000 items per hour, which should be sufficient for most reasonable farms. Now, if you have built a completely unreasonable farm, this is for you. A short interruption here. I was working on this system for three, four weeks now because I wanted it to be perfect because the previous version, the one you actually just saw in the previous scene, had quite some big bugs and problems. And I wanted this video to be perfect because I thought, I invented something new. This is amazing. Nobody has seen this before, or at least I haven't seen this anywhere before. And this is going to be my breakthrough video and everybody is going to subscribe to my channel and everything is going to be amazing. Well, yesterday Bumbo Jumbo just released casually a Hermitcraft episode where he pretty much invented more or less the same idea. Maybe not exactly the same system, but more or less the same idea. Well, I'm going to release this video anyway. And as you can see, this is not exactly the same system that was in the previous shot because I've been working on it. Let's think about what problem we are solving here. The fundamental problem of loot pickup systems like this is that they scale with the surface area of the hoppers that are picking up the loot. Even systems with hopper minecarts don't really change that because one hopper minecart can only spread its loot to four hoppers underneath it. And there will still be a bottleneck in how many hoppers you have that are picking up the loot. Spread the mobs over a bigger area, then you can pick up more loot, but it's very unlikely that you'll be able to spread the mobs evenly. So you can end up in a situation 
where even this 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 system has this problem where one of the hoppers and in this case it's the center one that is take picking up much more loot than the other ones so the best way would be to figure out a different way to spread the loots over many hoppers which by the way this is what the ice system is doing it's just spreading the loot between the sorting hoppers here best way would be to spread the loot from killing the mobs onto our storage system without passing through a choke point like this with the droppers and this is what this system is attempting to do let's see it in action to explain what's going on first we need to turn on the piston feed tape here and let's add some guardians at 60 hertz The Guardian fall on top of the moving blocks that the piston feed tape is moving. They drop their loot and the loot gets pushed around by the soul sand and the stairs. Now initially, and if you looked carefully earlier in the video, I had slabs instead of soul sand, but that caused an item loss because for some reason some of the loot sometimes and i cannot explain why and when and how was just falling through them and ending up on the side here often on the comparators here or just spilling out somewhere else in the in the system soul sand mostly prevent this but not entirely the system can still lose around one in five thousand items in my testing it's, that's not a big problem. With the slabs, uh, by the way, the problem was almost 3% of the items were being lost. So the piston feed tape is pushing the items around. The stairs are there to align the items and make sure that they're always pushed. They're not strictly necessary we could actually use slabs instead of the stairs because the soul sand is doing most of the work but adding back the slabs rather than the stairs causes the issue i just mentioned and by the way you can't have full blocks here because that makes even more loot to just explode out on the sides what we have here are just normal well, normal, I'm saying. Uh, those are double speed item filters, which you can see here. This is a double speed hopper line. This is a, you should recognize this from that example. This pushes items into this chest at, at double speed. But the interesting part here is how the item filters are set up. So this one, for example, is sorting cod and is set up normally the top hopper but the hopper below it has to be completely filled with the item we are sorting and that allows this system to work at the double speed as an item sorter now of course the things below it shouldn't be chests come on if you have this big of a loot problem this shouldn't be a chest you should have shulker box loaders or something much more high capacity than, than chest but i'm currently only having chest because I'm, I'm just using this to measure how fast this thing goes and by the way the wool blocks are so i can measure the performance of the system with the carpet mod there isn't really much to it the piston feed tape just has each corner independent with two observers like this it is possible to have this p piston feed tape go faster with just one observer and some dust into this piston but that makes the items misbehave i this is also something i cannot really explain why but it does if if the piston feed tape is just a little bit faster than this items will be misbehaving on the corners and they can end up outside the system again I'm not sure why, but extensive testing has shown that this is the case. The system doesn't have a hop clock. It just has this same setup of observers and a piston like everywhere else, 
but we can just remove this observer with a sticky piston. And if we put it back, that generates a first pulse that makes the system start going. And it's pretty much self-clocking. This becomes a clock because as soon as it's ready to push the block, it observes that and pushes it. This is the most basic system and it can handle around 800,000 items per hour. Now it should be relatively obvious that if you want you can just put these observers and the piston on the other side, make the piston feed tape turn this direction and then this direction and this direction and you can make pretty much as big loop as you want as long as the items can move an entire loop in a faster time than it takes them to despawn. I'm not exactly sure about the timing, but I'm pretty sure that if you have a loot collection problem that big, you already know how to do the math for it. If you're dealing with 10 million items per hour, you really don't need an explanation on how to calculate the size of this. The big problem you might run into is the geometry of this, because if you look at the item filters, normally the chests are on the other side, but it should be pretty obvious that they can't be here because the chests would be running into each other. So I had to do this a little bit awkward configuration for how to place the chests. Of course, if you change the geometry of this, the geometry of the chests becomes even more awkward, but I'm sure you can figure that one out. And this is also the reason why I won't be doing a block by block tutorial, because if you have a loot problem this big, you can already figure everything out from what you're seeing here. The glass here isn't to contain the items, because they are perfectly well behaved without the glass. It's just here to make sure that we can spawn proof it without affecting the performance, and we can. This is perfectly spawn proof. You need the glass here, of course, to contain the mobs so they, they don't fly on all the sides, and you probably need the glass until here to make sure that the items don't spill too much. But other than that, you're free to decorate this in any way you want. The only lights you might need are here, in case something can spawn on the soul sand. 60 guardians per second, by the way, only take up about half the capacity of this system. So, I don't know what crazy contraption you would need to have to need to expand this to other sides. Of course, this doesn't have to be guardians. Pretty much anything that dies from fall damage can be used in this system. Like the zombified piglins here. Of course, I'm gonna turn this off because this item filters are not set up for that loot. So we're now gonna get a lot of junk here that's gonna despawn. You can, all, of course, also connect this to a blast chamber or any other farm where you can concentrate the items to a one wide column. In any case, I hope that I showed you something new and interesting, and I hope that if you have a loot problem this big, I gave you enough information to build a system like this. But if you have any questions, ask them in the comments, and I'll try to answer anything I understand. Thanks for watching! Bye!